we'll talk about the random walk process okay now we are interested in the stochastic trend and one of the special case of stochastic trend is random walk process and when is that going to happen when the psi takes a value of one okay so how do we define a random walk is defined as a process where the current value of the variable is composed of the past value plus an error term okay so there are two important things in a random walk uh, series you have the past value term and the error term nothing more than that see so yt is the current value it's just the past value plus an error term at okay um so this is typically also known as white noise okay um where you have zero mean and variance of uh, one uh okay so in such a case you will not be able to use time series okay for white noise there's no point using time series there's nothing can be done uh, for time, uh, in a white noise series okay so just avoid uh, using anything for for you know such process so how do we uh, let's say and, and what's the motivation behind understanding random walk process well when you have a time series data and you you, you find out that um, it's it's following a random walk process then you stop there okay so that's basically a check that one need to do one needs to do uh, before even going for other forecasting uh, using other forecasting techniques okay so if you plot a random walk process it looks something like this okay it looks very weird there's no trend at all there's no pattern so basically what random walk means is that there is no pattern in the data there is no pattern in the data it's just you know pure random okay and there's nothing in the data that you can use uh, for forecasting your future something similar okay so this is also a for typical random work process okay uh, okay so random work process can be closely related to the behavior of stock market stock market also many times you know uh, information in the past values you know uh, although many people will say that you know forecasting stock price or return is very much possible but that's not always the always the thing uh, stock market many times uh, behaves purely as a random work sometimes it has some pattern but many times it it, it has no pattern in it it's also used in in understanding brownian motion in in many uh, science and uh, science areas also in finance a movement of a drunken man somebody who is drunk he will have no pattern if you and if you try to understand or study his pattern of walking there is no pattern at all okay so it's also a limiting process of an ar1 process so ar1 process is just yt equal to y sorry yt equal to pi y minus t plus at right so this is an ar1 process so when phi equal to 1 you take a random walk process okay if phi is less than 1 you have the ar1 okay so this is a typical condition for ar1 so random walk is basically the special case of ar1 where you cannot uh, go ahead in building a forecasting model so, so what the implication, what is the understanding or the takeaway point? The takeaway point here is that the implication of the process of this type is that the best prediction of Y for next period is the current value. Okay. Now, if you have a time series data uh, and that follows random work, uh, just stop there. Don't have to do anything. Uh, so, you all need to uh, convey or uh, you need to communicate to, uh, to the audience is that the best prediction for this particular time series for future is nothing but the current value. There's nothing that can, nothing more can be done uh, other than that. Okay. It can be shown that the mean of a random work process is constant, but the variance is not. Okay. So mean of the random work, in many situations it can be constant, but variance is never the case. And that's why random work is a typical case of a non-stationary series. But many non-stationary series can be made stationary and you can, you know, you know, do forecasting for future, except in the random work process. That's uh, where the difficulty is. Okay, 
sometimes um, you could have a deterministic component to random walk also and we call that again as a drift okay you have a constant term to it okay so instead of just yt equal to yt minus 1 plus the uh, error term you could also have something like theta okay theta naught you can add just the uh, drift okay so this is the uh, deterministic term and this is the stochastic term okay so it will be partially deterministic and partially uh, stochastic in this case so you know it doesn't start from zero right it starts somewhere here so that's the drift so this is the theta naught and then you know there is no trend at all okay so it has some um, deterministic part and some stochastic part okay. so this is the typical case of random walk with the drift so how do you remove the trend okay from a series a series containing a trend will not revert to long run mean okay so if a series has a, some kind of a trend it is either upward trend or there is a lower lower trend it is never going to let's say come back to the mean okay so this series something that you can't expect but that's what is needed for forecasting right so the usual methods for eliminating trend is detrending and differentiating Okay, either you detrend or you difference. Um, I'll briefly talk about it, not in detail. So here is the case of differentiating and how you make uh, something uh, stationary. So um, okay, so if you, if you take a random walk, okay, so a random walk is y t minus y t minus one equal to your uh, error terms. Okay, sorry. Uh, this is wrong yt equal to yt minus 1 plus your thing right so this is a typical case of random walk here at will be non stationary so in this is case this is a typical non stationary case but if you take a difference of that it is likely to be stationary if you take the first difference it is likely to be uh, you know stationary So this is where we need to understand what is known as an unit root text. So the name suggests unit root means we are only talking about how to find out whether the phi that we talked about in the non-stationary series is 1 or not. Okay. So in a, in a stochastic trend series uh, that we have just learned, if phi is 1, then we assure it's a random walk process and that's what we call it unit root and we need to statistically test that before getting to know um, so when we have a stationary system uh, you know we know for sure that the effect of any shock that is going to happen to the uh, uh, the time series will die out gradually okay in a stationary series if you have a shock it moves up it eventually comes down and then it removes somewhere in the mean and then even if another there is a shock in upward or whether it's downward it is if there is a downward shock here it will again come back but that's not the case in non-stationary system in non-stationary system if there is a shock okay if 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 something goes up it never comes down to the mean okay so it never approach the long run mean okay so that's one aspect of uh, you know uh, a, a non stationary series and from there we can derive a mode, uh, we can derive some sort of a clue as to how we can you know find out if there is presence of unit root that means whether the phi is one or, or not all right so there are two types of non stationary okay one case where you have the you know this case is just one and the other case is phi is greater than 1. We have we just taken beta, just keep changing notations. But you know, the second case we of course will ignore for here. So the first case we would like to see when is the case when we have the phi equal to 1. And that we can get to know using uh, the Kipula test. Okay, so this is a test 
uh, using which we can find out whether there is presence of unit root or the time series is uh, unit root or not. So unit root is just you know another way of saying that whether it's it's uh, a random work series or not. All right. So the simplest approach is just to have a year, year one series, okay, yt with the theta, and we have psi of yt minus one, okay, and we would like to know if psi um, is is sorry is if phi is one or not. Now this is year one series, right, and we expect phi to be less than one. If it is equal to one, then that's a problem. That's a random box series, right? So the hypothesis testing in the case of a Dicke-Fuller test is is like this. The uh, modulus of phi is either 1 or modulus of phi is less than 1, which is the alternative hypothesis. Either this will get accepted or, you know, we just, uh, you know, reject null, the null hypothesis, right, depending on what the test set statistic value is. We can refresh this to make it better, right, because, you know, in a t-test, we essentially uh, compare it with the 0 or non-zero, right. So we'll make it more simpler. So how you do that? You just subtract the previous time series from it. Okay. So we have y t equal to, um, you know, y t is uh, theta um, theta one, let's say minus um, sorry uh, phi one uh, y t minus one. Sorry, I think we have done something else. Okay. So we have the series yt equal to yt minus uh, 1, this is theta naught plus at. And then what we do is that we simply subtract yt minus 1. So from left and both right, yt minus yt minus 1 equal to uh, theta naught, sorry, phi, uh, sorry, yeah, this is theta, sorry, theta naught plus yt uh, minus 1. Uh, which is again psi phi here minus y t minus 1 plus a t. Okay. Now this is uh, just delta t, right? So delta y t is equal to theta naught plus here we can take y t out. So y t then inside we have 1 minus phi plus a t and then 1 minus phi we just denote uh, with some uh, other. Uh, you know, uh, symbol. Okay. So, uh, so this particular term, if it is equal to zero, then we have unit root. Otherwise, not. So it has now changed. Okay. So null hypothesis is now either it's zero or it's less than zero. Okay. So just you know, slight change. You know, here we are comparing with one or less than one. Here it is. You know, either it's zero or less than zero. There are three types of Dicke Fuller test we can do. Uh, I'm not going to the details of it, but depending on the kind of random work we are trying to uh, understand, we'll have different type of Dicke Fuller test. The first case is a pure random work. There is no drift. There is no theta theta term here, right? It's just um, the uh, past value of y t. Okay, so we would like to know if the coefficient is zero or not in this case. The second case we have a drift. Okay, uh, and in the third case, we have a drift, and we also have a deterministic time component. Okay, we have theta 1 t, so time, right, it's the deterministic trend. So it's just a combination of deterministic and stochastic trend, okay, linear time trend. Okay, so there are three types of behavioral test we can do depending on what type of uh, what the intention is. When we can also do uh, all three and see which one is actually uh, is the the best for the given time series data. So how do you uh, find a test statistic and how do you do that? Right? You just apply you know, OLS, you, know, you have the equation, regression equation, you just find, uh, we just estimate the parameters. So parameters here is phi, right? Remember it's one minus phi, you know, we just change it to a different symbol, but you know, ultimately we're trying to find out what phi is. So we can find that out using OLS, and then we can find out the t statistics. Okay, we can find out the t statistics, and then we see, um, you know, uh, whether it's significant or not, given for a given particular value. Okay, so that's how you will get to know uh, if a particular time series 
is uh, is a unit root case or not and if that is the case you will be able to find out whether it's it's a typical random walk or not in such a case you know the limitations of time series methods uh, won't allow you to let's say you know forecast future you would rather take more of a guess depending on the past values of, of the time series rather than you know doing some sort of analysis that is uh, you know not going to give any accurate result so that's one of the you know test important tests that people do before even starting to you know explore other uh, time series models for forecasting and it's, it's quite important early enough if you get to know if it's, it's a particular time series is random work then you do not go ahead with any of this any of this uh, you know sophisticated methods uh, you will be saving uh, a lot of time uh, in doing in doing that